Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Today in this part of the Restoring the Donated Trumpet series, we will be doing a lot of dry fitting and making sure the process is very smooth. It won't be the last part in the series, I hope you'll forgive me, the next one will be. But this one is very interesting, I get a lot of the uh, fitting work done and making sure that everything is a very smooth process to finish up the job. Let me show you how I do it. The first thing that I decide to tackle are these solder spots where the braces connect to the lead pipe and the valve section and the bell connects to the valve section as well. So I grab some sandpaper and I'm doing uh, my best to stay inside of the line. I don't want to uh, scratch any of the lacquer on the outside of this area. So I just have a very small piece of sandpaper and I'm doing very light, uh, small motions to stay inside of it. Here you can see that I've kind of exposed that fresh brass in that area only and again that's just going to help the solder stick better when we get to that stage. Like I said earlier a lot of this video is going to be dry fitting so I am going to be preparing a few parts for that now. Here you can see there's still some solder left in there uh, so I'm just going to scrape that out real quick and what I'm doing here is preparing this slide tube expander and it's going to hold on to that tube um, a bit better than I could do just by hand and I'm burnishing out uh, a very small area that kind of had a, a small dent in it. This was causing some extra resistance when I was uh, using the slide so I just needed to smooth that out. Here I'm just testing that again, feeling what it feels like to move the tube all the way around the slide and see if there's anything wrong with it still. So how this slide tube fits on the horn is actually pretty important to the alignment of the lead pipe. And what you can see me here doing is dry fitting all this together and feeling how all of the parts are going to fit together. Um, I only need to insert the lead pipe into that tube as far as it needs to go. Uh, there actually is a small gap between the end of the lead pipe and the tuning slide leg. I'm also just checking how that brace is going to fit on there and see the exact spot that it's going to be on the lead pipe. So the next thing up is just that I need to prepare these braces for soldering. Uh, lots of fresh brass needs to be exposed and the way I choose to do this is uh, to kind of use my pliers to hold it uh, as kind of an extra pair of fingers. Take that heat from my micro torch and just uh, kind of rub off that uh, thin layer of solder. So this gets most of it off from all of these. Um, later I can take some sandpaper to get the rest of it off. But for now just the classic Q-tip uh, will do just fine. Here you can see me grabbing another one of these braces and it isn't exactly the right shape to be held in this jig that I uh, just made up very quickly and it drops on the ground. This kind of misshaped uh, the brace a little bit so what I've got to do is repair that before it can go back on the horn and I grab this small tapered mandrel that's made for various trumpet parts, give it a quick wipe down and I go to a section of the mandrel that is a similar uh, kind of diameter to the curvature of that brace and I use um, a small dent hammer to start reshaping that into the section that it needs to be. So here you can see uh, just the shape that I restored. It's got a gentle curve back to it and it should fit on the trumpet nicely again. Because I couldn't get this solder off uh, with the micro torch and a q-tip, I grab uh, some sandpaper and kind of wrap it around the needle nose end of my pliers and I start using the half round side of those pliers uh, kind of as a mandrel kind of to get this back to the exposed brass. I just have to repeat that process on another brace and this works very well because uh, I can't get enough pressure on the part with just the tip of my thumb so this trick really helps. Here you can see uh, just how much better that looks. Now we're ready to go back to the dry fitting process. So I get this in the vise again and uh, kind of attach all these parts back together. And I am going to put the bell on this time to really get a sense of how this is gonna start coming together. So I am just visually kind of inspecting everything 
and looking how the parts are going to interact with each other. So here I've got the Z braces that kind of hold all of this together, the, the cross braces, and all I'm doing here is feeling how uh, much I'm going to have to change them at, if at all because I had to take out a couple of dents and I've kind of moved them from their original position. All I'm doing here is selecting the orientation of the lead pipe, which is just important for cosmetic reasons, and I know where the brace is going to go uh, based on where it was originally. Uh, there's kind of a small solder spot that was still left. I also now get to see how that brace fits back onto the lead pipe with this exact uh, diameter on there. So I grab that dent hammer and I'm shaping it to exactly match the curvature of that lead pipe at that spot on the lead pipe. These are very light taps, uh, and especially since I'm using a metal hammer, I don't have to put much force behind it because there's already some mass with the hammer being metal. Now I'm just applying some of this paste flux to the parts that are about to get soldered. And I use the paste flux so that I know the whole part uh, that needs to have the, the flux has it. I can visually verify that. But uh, many other people use uh, a liquid flux, which I am definitely considering switching to. I need to get my hands on some to kind of test out the differences between the two. With that part attached now, I can put in the tuning slide and the lead pipe, which I'm going to score very lightly uh, with this scraper to know how far in that is supposed to go. And then I apply some paste flux to this as well. I do have some extra flux on this part, and this is just to ensure that it has enough uh, flux in there because it is tapered, it will fit slightly differently on the tuning slide end than it does on the mouthpiece end. I still clean off the extra though, uh, as anywhere that the flux is, solder will flow there. So to have a more cosmetically uh, pleasing solder, that's one of the steps that you have to take is make sure there's not extra flux on the outside, which is an advantage of the liquid solder. I'm setting up the third valve slide because it's actually an important index for making sure that the slides aren't skewed and that the alignment of all of these parts is uh, how it was intended in the original design. So these parts won't be soldered at this time and they don't have any flux on them, but they are in place just to ensure alignment. Now I ran out of some binding wire, so I use a zip tie that I do not uh, tighten down very much. It's just there to barely grab onto the brace and ensure that the right contact and distance is being maintained. All of these steps remind me a lot of machining actually because uh, it's all in the setup, <laughs> making sure that the actual process that you're trying to do, be that soldering or making a cut, certain depth of cut, you've got to make sure that your setup is proper and you kind of know the dimensions on everything and that's what I'm doing here. So this solder goes uh, smoothly because I put in all the time to make sure that it would go smoothly. Soldering as a skill can take some time to build up because you kind of have to know the heat capacity of the metals you're working with, how much mass is kind of in that area, and how long it will hold that heat uh, because you don't want to overheat it, and you will know how much solder will flow given that heat. Even though I know that the flux was applied all around this part, uh, it's going to be very difficult for the solder to flow in a direction that's kind of opposite of gravity. So I am adding some extra in different areas to ensure that the solder has flowed around those areas, making sure that it's got this seal around the whole part, otherwise there will be an air leak at that spot. I use the Q-tip to just clean up that area and make sure that any of the solder that's exposed just on that line is shiny. If it's dull, then you'll notice and it kind of just takes away from the horn. Next up is soldering the lead pipe to the tuning slide receiver leg. And I don't want the solder from this process to stick onto the actual tuning slide leg, which can happen very easily. So I'm making sure that I'm using that kind of index mark that I made earlier, making sure that the tuning slide leg is in the right spot, but then applying a small gap with the actual tuning slide so that there's space and the solder won't flow between those two areas. So the way I held my micro torch here, it actually uh, set my rag on fire. So I had to put that out with some extra water from the uh, kind of quench tank that I've got there in the back. 
with dealing with that kind of small fire that happened, I thought enough time had passed for the metal to cool. So I grabbed this, but it's still a bit too hot. But as you can see, it is uh, not soldered together and they come apart very easily. So that's good news. Otherwise I would have created a bunch of extra work for myself. I was a bit heavy handed with the solder here. So there's some extra that I need to clean up. I turn the micro torch on and just set it on the bench and then hold the lead pipe in my hand and a Q-tip in the other one to get that extra part out. I am rotating it to make sure that the solder is evenly distributed. Now I'm just double checking the alignment that I intended to use for this part and I get it back in position so that I can set it up for the final solder of this lead pipe to that second valve brace. And that's it on this part of the build. So next time we've just got to finish up with the first valve slides and the bell and then making sure that the braces are in line and attached without tension. So if you want to make sure that you catch that when that video drops, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for stopping by the shop.